Hello friends and welcome back to She's In Her Apron. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my top 15 foods we should stockpile on a budget. Hey friends, I'm so glad you're here. All right, we're gonna talk about how we could do all of this on a budget. I always tell you, create your budget. That's gonna look different for everybody, right? During 2021, I've been taking you guys along every month. We go from January, through December, so I share with you items to start your food storage with. If you've not seen any of those videos or don't know what I'm talking about, I have a whole playlist for you down below. I was checking out a lot of great prepping blogs. I love going and researching and seeing what everyone is talking about, what works for everybody. This is how I've started. I'll leave all my favorite resources down below for you. But today, this video is inspired by PreppingPlanet.com. I am enjoying that website right now, so I'll leave that link for you down below. All my prices. I'm just comparing to Walmart. Walmart is one of the cheapest stores here in our country. I know there's a lot of other great stores um, in our country like Aldi's, but a lot of places don't have it, and Walmart is all across the country, so I'm comparing to Walmart. There's a lot of foods to consider when you want to stockpile. First, you should always consider their shelf life. The whole point is get foods that will last longer, so that way you're rotating and using them, Anything that's processed or anything like that will have a short life and you'll just be wasting your money. So we want to go for foods that have a longer shelf life. And try to stay away from foods that only last a couple of weeks. Also, think about foods that don't need to be frozen. I have four freezers. One big freezer, one mini freezer, and two half freezers with my refrigerators. So it's good to have frozen food on hand. I do. But what can we have on our shelf as well, especially when the power goes out and we don't have a generator to power our freezers? What do we have on our shelves that will last long and fill our bellies when the power goes out? Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top 15 food items to start stockpiling on a budget. Number one is rice. Rice is filling. I love getting the jasmine rice. It's a long grain rice and it is gluten free. This is when you definitely need that food saver machine. Start putting them in whatever size way you want to store them. Get that air out and you can store them in buckets. Best thing you can do is get yourself some food grade buckets. And I like to use the, I think they're called gamma lids and they could twist onto your bucket. They could press, the way that you use them is you press them down, they could seal them, then you can untwist to get into them if it's something like rice or oats. But find yourself some food grade buckets. There's a, a lot of stores in my area here in Utah that sell them. So I always try to have these buckets on hand. Rice will last you years. So it is a great, cheap, resource on a budget. Right now, I'm seeing at Walmart a two pound bag of their great value long grain rice for $1.28. So keep an eye on prices as you go through this journey. We are seeing inflation. If you'd like to see a video where I talked about that, the link is below and in the eye in the sky. Grab yourself some bags of pasta. We go through pasta pretty quick in the house. I like to stock up on elbow macaroni. I could do different pasta salads with this macaroni and cheese. This is Elbow Macaroni by American Beauty. Best used by April 18th, 24. And that's just in this bag by itself. If you use your food saver machine, you're gonna have this for a long, long time. So definitely take advantage of that. I also stockpile orzo. I have a yummy chicken orzo soup and I just love throwing this in soups in general. So I always have orzo on hand. It's a little more expensive, but I can get a lot of soups in meals out of this little box. I absolutely love rigatoni because I can do my lazy man lasagnas and I love penne. Ah, uh, penne you can do anything with. So I always have an array of pastas on hand. Our Kroger, our Smiths will do a great deal on pasta and that's when I stock up on pasta during those sales. And of course, sugar. Right now I'm seeing for a four or pound bag um, of sugar at Walmart is $2.08. Sugar will last you a long time. I have sugar stored in number 10 cans in our, what I call the Monica closet. And if you need powdered sugar, all you need to do is grind up, blend up your sugar. If you want brown sugar, all you have to do is add molasses to your granulated sugar and boom, you have brown sugar. You can grind it up a little more if you want to make it a little finer. So definitely get your buckets, 
use your food saver and store them in your bucket. Next is powdered milk. This is great when you run out of milk and you're like, great, what do I do? So there are some powdered milks that taste better than others. I like the powdered milk from Thrive. I do have an affiliate link below. This is something that you're gonna have to start introducing to your family for them to get used to, but powdered milk is great for baking. You can make your own Bisquick recipes with it. So I like having it on hand. Um, use it as a creamer for your coffee. Dry milk has so many benefits in storage. You can use it for a lot of things. Right now at Walmart, what I saw was a box. They're like 3.2 ounce box for $2.98, but they also have a sealed pouch. And that was a one pound, one pound 9.6 ounce pouch for $7.92. I would just go ahead and go for the box. I have used my food saver with those before I started getting my canned dry milk. So I would definitely use your food saver machine. With that, I don't think you put an oxygen packet in. So be careful. Check and see which foods you use an oxygen packet and which foods you don't because you could really mess things up like sugar. Don't put an oxygen packet in with your sugar. Potatoes. Potatoes are a great thing to have in your stockpile and you can get them on a budget. So one of the best things is diced potatoes. We have recently just started using canned potatoes. They're not bad, you guys. I was a little leery on it, but heat them up, mix them up with milk and salt and butter and they're delicious. You could throw them in soups, stews they are a great thing to have on hand this will last you a long time i bought these this year and these cans go are good till 2023 that's only the best buy date so canned goods last much longer so on a budget canned goods are your friend i also like to um stock up on the dehydrated or freeze-dried potatoes you can find them on the shelf of any grocery store use your food saver machine take advantage of that they're going to last you a long time potatoes are great to put in casseroles they're a great great filler you can grind up the powder and use it to thicken your soups and stews at walmart i am seeing with like the canned potatoes you could get their great value for 62 cents a can and the del monte is a dollar 18 so this one is from another store and I don't remember the price on this, but um, later in the year, we're gonna do an another price grocery inflation video, see how much it's gone up um, even more and I'm gonna compare, so stay tuned for that. Next is lentils, stock up on lentils. I am definitely getting into lentil soup. The kids are liking it more. One of our favorite lentils is split peas. We love um, keeping the ham hock of our ham. So if you end up getting a ham, save the ham hock, you could freeze it, and then we love to make split pea soup. It's one of my kids' favorites, and so we always have bags of split peas on hand. Those are a great thing to store. They're gonna last you a long time, and they're gonna fill your belly. Also, dry beans. I love having pinto beans on hand. I love cooking them up in my Instapot, and we can make a, like a cheesy, creamy pinto beans that we have with all our Mexican dishes. So good. And then if you don't have any buckets and want to reuse some things that you have in your house, this was like a Halloween um, pretzel thing that we had a year ago and that we keep some of our small bags of beans that we get periodically that we put in here. So this one, look at that. That's a four pound bag of pinto beans in there. And then I have black beans. I have chickpeas beans for a 15 bean soup but at some point i should food savor them up beans are fantastic so any way you want to store them but having dried beans is the way to go as well they'll last you a long time here's our canned beans we're always having great northern beans pinto beans black beans kidney beans on hand and we have them with soups stews salads, enchiladas, burritos. And with that, think of refried beans as well. We always have refried beans on hand with diced green chilies. Let's talk about canned sauces. Now, these are things like cream of broccoli, cream of celery, cream of chicken, cream of mushroom. I have all those here and I like to wait for a really good sale and then I'll stockpile them up. So right now, Campbell's, I'm seeing for 98, 99 cents for cream of mushroom soup. Also for sauces, 
Count in your tomato sauces and your Alfredo sauces if you use them. We're always using these in rotation. I find them on sale and rotate them out. So you always have at least a pasta meal of some sort to feed your belly. Next is canned fruit. We always have peaches and pears and some form of applesauce on hand. You can also use applesauce in place of oil when it comes to baking. Canned vegetables. They are great on a budget. I have a ton here. So what I am seeing in my store for canned vegetables, their average is about 46 to 50 cents a can. My store carries Del Monte and we're looking at $1.18. Not all Walmart stores are priced the same. All different towns and areas are priced different, I noticed. And I live in Utah, if you guys are wondering what part of the country I'm in. On a budget, I love stocking up on corn. We love using green beans, carrots. I just started getting into canned carrots this past year. Why I haven't done it before, I don't know. We're getting into trying new canned vegetables. Um, this one is squash with Velveeta onions. We haven't tried this one yet, so we're gonna put this in a meal plan. And sauteed cabbage, haven't tried this yet. Only grabbed one of each, because if we don't like them, I don't want a ton of them. So grab a can if you're new to the whole canned vegetable things or certain kinds, give it a try. We just tried canned yams over Thanksgiving. I do have a video of uh, some recipes with it. Yum. I have sweet potatoes, great, great vitamins in sweet potatoes. So I have a couple of cans on hand as well. For any budget, canned vegetables are the way to go. Okay, canned soups. Let's talk about canned soups. Um, we make a lot of fresh soups, but it's good to have canned soups on hand. We do keep on hand chicken noodle soup. It's good to have this on hand for when you don't feel well. Um, this has a long shelf life. One of our favorite canned soups is tomato soup. This we can add so many seasonings to. We add milk, basil, and oregano. Yum. So for canned soups right now at Walmart, they average in my area, I'm seeing $1.78 to $1.98. Next is canned meat and fish. Our go-to canned meat is tuna fish. We love tuna fish. We have a tuna pot pie recipe. That is linked below. It's one of our favorite meals. We love tuna fish sandwiches. And if you've noticed, tuna has gone up in price. So when you see it on sale, grab a couple of cans. Right now, I saw clams on sale at a local grocery store for 10 for 10, they were a dollar a can. Normally, I'm paying a dollar 42 to a dollar 72 a can, but with price hikes, I'm paying close to almost two dollars a can for clams, and clams we use for clam chowder in my home. That is pretty much on a monthly rotation um, with our menu planning. When I saw that sale, I stocked up. I got enough for two rounds of um, clam chowder. Also for canned meats, I'd like to stock up on canned beef. Can roast beef right now at Walmart is going for $3.74 a can. Yowza. And chicken, canned chicken is going anywhere from 98 cents, $1.78, and 244, just depending on the ounces and what you're getting. I'm not a big fan of canned chicken, I will tell you that. It has to have a ton of flavoring. It's got to be in, in a meal. I just can't, like, I have a hard time with it. But it's a great protein. So we'll add it in soups, we'll add it in chicken enchiladas. Um, we'll make chicken salad with it. So canned chicken is really good to have on hand. Another thing that is great for any budget is oats. So we have quick oats, still cut oats, and the good old old fashioned oats. And I have buckets of oats in our long term food storage. If you'd like to see a video on that, I'll link it below. But oats are great to add on hand because you can add them to meatloafs, cookies, granolas, you can even grind it up and use it as a flour. These you can add to many recipes, bulk them up, and it's very inexpensive. And the Great Value brand is $2.58. Next is canned tomatoes. I have tomatoes for our gravy, that's what we call it. Um, we make a big pot of that. Crushed tomatoes that we use in sauces uh, and pizza sauces diced tomatoes, petite diced tomatoes, stewed tomatoes. They go in a ton of things. Also with that, don't forget 
to stock up on tomato paste. And I also like to have some Rotel tomatoes. They have diced uh, green chilies in there as well, but it's not always a must. I always make sure that I have those diced green chilies on hand. These are go-tos for canned tomatoes. We like to also stock up on bouillons. We have all different types of bouillons, powder to the creamy kind and chicken stock. Chicken stock, chicken broth, beef broth, put that in in your budget if you can. The best way to really save on a budget is to use bouillon. That stores really well. Stretch One jar of bouillon will stretch you for many recipes but I always keep chicken broth on hand. Well friends, there you have it, how you can start stockpiling on a budget. I hope this was informative. Any tips or tricks, please leave them down below. Um, I hope that this gave you the motivation to start your food storage process and doing it on a budget. Check out the playlist below on how you could start your food storage and do it once a month to start your stockpile. All right friends, thank you so much for joining me and we will see you soon, bye.